What's going on everyone? Today I want to show you how to set up your very own Windows based Alpha Vanilla WoW Patch 0.5.3 emulation server. I'll also show how to patch the Alpha 0.5.3 game client for it to be able to connect properly along with a number of other fixes. This version of Vanilla WoW is called the Friends and Family Alpha from December of 2003. This version of course has lots of half-baked things in it that you won't actually see in the actual release of Vanilla World of Warcraft. For instance, the old school talent system that never made it in, along with a whole bunch of other very interesting things. So I invite you to fire this up and explore the game to see for yourself all the interesting things that might have been. Before I do dig into it, I just want to give a big shout out to everyone involved in the Alpha Core project. Without them volunteering their time to piece this all together, we wouldn't be able to experience this bit of gaming history. Anyhow, let's begin. So I just want to show the Alpha Projects Alpha Core project here. This is the Git page here that has information on it that you can take a gander at here. Now today we're not going to be going over the Docker portion of it. That I will leave for an entirely different video. I'm going to be going over, as I had mentioned before, the Windows-based version of this project. And so Darabon has created a very helpful setup guide here, which is nice and simple to follow, but I figured I would make a video on it anyhow, just so people can see what is needed to get everything rolling. As they mention here, you're going to need Windows 10 version 1803 or newer. At the point of making this video, the latest and greatest version of Windows 10 would be 22H2, which if you need help building up a fresh Windows 10 environment, Feel free to check out the video in the description below, which is my guide on setting up Windows 10, along with a whole bunch of tips and tricks and optimizations for it. Anyhow, scrolling to the top here, to pull down the latest and greatest setup scripts and all that good stuff, you'd want to go ahead and just double check that you click on this here, releases latest 1.4, click on that, and then just go ahead and download the alpha core setup.zip here. And I've already downloaded it on the server candidate that I've created. And I've also already extracted it as it is a zip file. So let's go ahead and pop it open here. And one thing I'm going to do since I don't have it set yet, I'm going to go to view and I check file names and extensions and also hidden items so that we can see everything here. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and kick off the nice setup.bat file here. Key thing is double click on it, do not right click on it and do run as administrator. I've experience problems doing the run as administrator. So just go ahead and double click on it. If you get the Windows smart screen pop up here, don't worry about this. Everything is safe. Click more info, hit run anyway. And then at this point, we'll just go ahead and let it do its thing. There may be times when the UAC pops up, or in this case, we have to just go ahead and manually type Y to agree to terms, hit enter. And then we'll just hit yes here and just be patient as it crunches along. And for PowerShell, we'll go ahead and hit yes. Now we're going to be pulling down the MariaDB server. And yes, now it's going to start pulling in all of its dependencies here. Anytime that it's standing at a prompt here, we're going to go ahead and just hit enter through all of this. We won't be going over any security hardening measures and stuff like that. So we're just going to go ahead and leave everything as is. But you can certainly go through and set things how you want them. So I'm just going to keep hitting enter. So enter for database username. I'm going to just hit enter for the database password. Enter for the port, leaving it as is. Leave the realm database as is. Leave the DBC database by default. Leave the world database as is. And then I'll, for the firewall, we'll just click this here and allow access. And we'll continue to wait. And if you do question if anything is still running, you can always go ahead and right click the taskbar. Go to Task Manager, and then we can just see stuff is still crunching along, and obviously it's happening all on the left here as well. All right, so if you if you have your sound on, you will hear a little bell noise when it's officially now started. Now, you've got a few options here. One is your server is also where your game is going to be playing off of, in which case you can go ahead and leave everything as it is. You can go ahead and jump ahead in my video to the game client patching portion. If you're interested in getting it so that your server is strictly going to be a server and you'll be connecting into it from other machines, then we're going to go over that section right now. So let's go ahead and go into the authentication at world server portion here. We're going to do control C to terminate that. And then we're actually going to go ahead and stop 
MariaDB. And there actually is this very nice batch file here, which will safely shut it down. So let's go ahead and just double click on that. Smart screen pop up, just click more info, run anyway. And now MariaDB is stopped. So the first thing that we need to do is go into Alpha Core Master, etc. folder, config folder, and then the config.yaml file here. Let's go ahead and right click on it. Open with, I'm just going to go ahead and use plain notepad, but if you have notepad plus plus, you can certainly feel free to use that as well. Let me maximize this. So in here is going to be a number of configurations that you can set for the world. So here, of course, you've got connections for the database. Here's the root, the password. Here's your database names. And here's all the server configs. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. You can feel free to change things and see how it reacts. However, I do recommend that any changes in here, you do a backup of this file just in case. What I'm going to go ahead and do here is a pretty safe change, so I'm not going to go ahead and actually back up this file. But for the world server, we need to go ahead and change the IP to the IP of the server itself. And so if you don't know what the IP of your machine is, let's go to start, type in CMD, hit enter, type in IP config, hit enter. And here is the IP that I need to put into this spot here. Paste it in. That looks good. Let's go ahead and save this since that's the only change I'm going to make in this configuration file. And we can close out a command prompt and let's get all the way back to this section. Next, let's go ahead and fire MariaDB backup. And so we'll utilize this guy right here. So let's double left click on it. Smart screen pop up, run anyway. And the database, the SQL database is now running there. So that looks fine. Part of the setup script also installs Heidi SQL for you. So you'll have a SQL manager client on your server. Let's go ahead and double click on it to launch it. Select new. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as is just to show what's going to happen here. I'm going to click open and that's going to give this error here. Hit OK for this. Drop this down to lib mysql.dll. Hit open and then save modifications. We'll hit yes. And now you can see the alpha underscore dbc, alpha underscore realm, alpha underscore world databases are here. The only one we're going to go ahead and touch is we're going to expand out the alpha underscore realm. I'm going to maximize Heidi SQL. We're going to click on the realm list table. We are going to click in the data tab up here. And then we're going to go ahead and change the proxy address and the realm address to be the IP that we saw earlier. We're going to go ahead and leave the realm name as is here. Let's go ahead and double click in here and then we'll just click out of it. And if you're not familiar with Heidi SQL, just clicking out initiates the change. So let's go ahead and do the same for realm address and we'll click out of it to initiate it. So at this point, these are in fact altered. Now we can go ahead and go to file exit Heidi SQL. Now to be safe, I like to go ahead and stop the database again, give it a few seconds to rest, and then let's kick MariaDB off once more. Move this up here, and then let's go ahead and kick off the start underscore alpha core bat. And we'll go ahead and do that and run anyway. Give this a moment to crunch. And again, the firewall pop-up happens. So we'll just do allow access. And we hear the bell, which means that we are up and running here. So next, let's go ahead and jump into the game client portion. Now, unfortunately for the game client, I'll have to rely on you to hunt down the actual game client before you can start this next process. A simple Google search should lead you down the right path. The key thing is, is that you need version 0.5.3 of the alpha client in order to continue on here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch machines. So for the patch files that we need in order for the client to be able to properly communicate to the server and also patch a number of issues that you could stumble into, you'll have to go to this website here and then just click on download here for the mods.zip file. I will have a link for everything I show in the description below as well. I've already downloaded it. I've got the mods.zip file here. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on it. Extract all, browse. I'm going to stash it on the desktop here. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it patches. And then we'll select it, select folder, and extract. So I already have the 0.5.3 client installed. So I'm going to just click on the shortcut here just once, right click on it, open file location. Let's move this over here. Let me just adjust the Explorer windows for a second here. All right. 
with a fresh install of the 0.5.3 client, it should look like this. Let's go ahead and open up the mods folder. Let's copy all these files and then let's paste them into here. It's going to warn you on what you want to do. We are going to replace the files in the destination. And now we can go ahead and close out of this window. And now let's go ahead and fire up the wowclient.exe just so that it will go ahead and populate in the configuration file that we need in order to set the realm information. So let's go ahead and double click on wowclient.exe. As you see, folders are already being created. And so this is not going to work at the moment. What we need to do is let's go ahead and quit out of the game because as I'd mentioned, we were just getting it to create the folders that we needed. So let's go to the WTF folder, the config.wtf. Go ahead and right click on it and select edit. Let me expand this out. And so what we're going to do, any area that references an IP or a DNS name. So for instance, realm address, let's go ahead and change this to the IP address of your server. Or if you're running the game on the same box as the server, then you would just type in 127.0.0.1 for both the areas that I'm going to alter here with the IP address of the actual server. So since I'm connecting in remotely, I'm going to do 192.168.60.228. And let's see what else we've got here. Scroll down and then this set realm list for this DNS here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this and type in the IP here as well, which once again, if you are running the game locally on the server, then it's the 127.0.0.1 or the IP address of your server if you are remotely connecting into it. One thing I actually like to do is I like to blank everything but the set realm list and the set realm address. And then we're just going to sure up everything so that it should look like this. It's save, of course, put in the IP addresses that your server actually is. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And now let's go ahead and kick off the wowclient.exe again. First thing we are going to do is select change realm. Here is our realm here, alpha core, population zero. Click that, hit okay. Unknown account, that's okay. There are no accounts currently, hit okay. And now how the server is currently configured and you can always change this in the YAML file that we were changing the IP of the world server for is that it allows for accounts to be auto created when someone goes to log in. So if an account doesn't exist, someone types in the credentials for it, it will auto create it and log that user in. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the account name of test and password of test. Just as an easy test here, hit enter. If all goes well, we should now be passed to the world server here, in which case we can go ahead and create a character. And then let's go ahead and select the troll. And best of all, we'll leave it as the horrible female troll that was in the alpha. Right, let's just go ahead and name it test. And I'm not gonna customize anything here, so we'll just hit accept and enter world. All right, and we're in. So one thing we can do is if we hit escape, we can go to options and we can go ahead and start changing things up here. So feel free to max all your, your settings out my case, I can't drag it all the way over because I'm actually using a Pi KVM here, which makes things a little wacky. So we'll just hit OK here. And then we can see that weird female troll walking animation. But anyhow, things are now ready to explore. Quests are in the game. One thing to mention is that the max level is level 25. And so things are very much functional in this. We'll just go ahead and turn in this quest here just to show it here. All right, so that is all you need to do to get a Windows-based Alpha Vanilla WoW server going. If you found this video to be useful, please like it. And to keep up with more videos like this that I will be releasing in the coming weeks, please subscribe to my channel. I do plan to release a follow-up video at some point showing off how to build an Alpha Vanilla WoW server utilizing Docker, so keep an eye out for that. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.